Hi, welcome back. We are in video 2.7 for the quotient rule. This is part of that video set 2.6, 2.7, and 2.8. So I'll go through this rather quickly, actually. So to recognize the quotient rule, again, we have U and V, or F and G, or M and N, or basically any different functions that are differentiable. So what does that look like? It looks like U divided by V would become U prime V minus V prime U all over V squared. But hold on. That doesn't seem very new. That seems rather similar, doesn't it? And why does it feel so familiar? Well, looking at just that numerator, we can recall the product rule is U prime V plus V prime U. So the only difference is that we're using a difference. Uh, right, okay. So we're using, instead of a sum, you're using a difference. Instead of addition, you're using subtraction. And then, of course, it's now a fraction over V squared. So you can recognize it in the form I gave it to you. You can recognize the cumulative property, which simply tells me that this is the same up here. So really just showing you it slightly different ways. I can use F prime and G prime as well. And of course, um, I want you to recognize the conceptual. So in some schools around this country, they use this concept right here, which says low D high minus high D low over low squared, which is the same as saying low. So the derivative of the bottom V, as you can see, V is left alone. D high derivative of the top minus high. So the U is left alone. D low. So the derivative of the bottom all over low squared. That's just one way of thinking at it, looking at it. But uh, the way Miss Jag looks at it is this phrase right here. And so hear this phrase multiple times, write this down, say it back, however you can me memorize it. The derivative of the top minus, or sorry, the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. So again, another way we can see that as the product rule as a difference, because we're going to subtract, so the product rule over B squared. That's another way we can see that. So here we have some numeric examples. Hey, look at that. Doesn't that look familiar? That's the exact same problem we saw in unit 2.6, except instead of F times G or U times V, this is F divided by G or U divided by G. So the very first thing I'm going to do is create my equation. So the derivative of simply X would be the derivative of the top, so f prime, times the bottom, oops, that's not the bottom, times the bottom, minus, because it's a difference, the derivative of the bottom times the top, all over the bottom squared. We're going to do that. Then I simply plug it in. That becomes f prime of 5 times g of 5 minus g prime of 5 times f of 5 all over g of 5 squared. And so I can plug in those numbers. f prime of 5, I'm going to do it up here. f prime of 5 is so 6 times negative 3 minus 2 times 1 all over negative 3 squared. So that becomes negative 18 minus 2 over 9. So that's negative 20th over 9 is our end answer. Okay, if I want to verify that, I do have my answer written in. So there you go. I have another one here. It's very similar, except this time you actually have to account for each of these. So I'm going to do the equation, but I hope you take the time to plug it in and solve before looking at the end answer. So in order to do this, I could either figure out my portions because, yeah, we have this written out, but I can technically have a U and a v right here. So I could take the time to say what u is, what u prime is, what v is, what v prime is, because they are different. I could do that. Or I could just go ahead and begin. It's kind of up to us. So I'm going to go ahead and begin with my h prime of x. The derivative of the top is going to be the derivative of f of x, so f prime of x, minus the derivative of 4, which is just 0. So I'm good there. Times my bottom, just the way it is. Minus, because we're doing a difference, the derivative of the bottom. And so for this one, that 2 is going to disappear, but the negative 5 is not. Times the original top. All over, I don't think I needed that last one. All over the original bottom squared. Okay, so then I hope you take the time to plug in your 5 into each of these points and evaluate accordingly. Okay, 
So pause. All right, here's your answer. All right, so let's look at some graphical examples. Again, I'm going to do a couple, and then I hope you're pausing and doing the rest yourself. So our few examples, or I think it's either two, it might be three, are going to use both of this. So h prime of x would be the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the, bo the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. Now, a pause to think about something AP style. So AP loves to do this. Why? Because we are used to seeing f of x over g of x. That's just standard. It's what we teach you guys. So they'll flip it just so that your equation has to look different. That is a common AP tactic. Just be aware of it. And this is why I teach you. I teach you the concept, not a memor not an equation to memorize because of these instances. Conceptual calculus is what you are learning. You are not learning procedures. You are learning concepts. So be sure, be aware, know your phrases. So then I simply plug in, right? All I would have to know is what h prime of negative 3 is. And in order to do that, I should have declared g of negative 3 g prime of negative 3, f of negative 3, and f prime of negative 3. I should have declared all of these concepts. So I do the same thing we did for the uh, product rule. We look at negative 3, and we figure out all those values. Our function values are on the graph. Our derivative values would be our slope, because my derivative is my slope. So this is negative 2, negative 2. Uh, oops, that's not what that should say. Negative 2, negative 2, this one is positive 1, this is negative 1. So you plug all of that in and get your answer. And I hope you pause and plug that in because you are trying to just verify that what you did matches what I did. So here's that answer. And here we have another one. Again, this is the same concept. So you should know what g of negative 1 is, what g prime of negative 1 is, what f of negative 1, and f prime of negative 1. It's the same equation. And if I look at my graph, there's nothing funky happening in negative 1, so I can evaluate. Like there is no corner, there is no cusp, and there is no vertical tangent. So we're good to differentiate. Now I have an example. Here's your answer. I have an algebraic example for us. So here I am going to go down the list and create my list because we can still match the inner and we can still match the outer. So this is going to be the cube root of t, which I know is t to the one third, and this is one third t to the negative two thirds. This is t squared plus four, and this is two t. And look at that. Hey, didn't we do this example before? Yes, we did. So I'm going to match my inside. So f prime, it's going to be this big old equation. So the inside, here we go, 1 third t to the negative 2 thirds times t squared plus 4 minus, because it's a difference, the original, that should be an equals right there, the outside all over the original bottom. I can look here or I can look at this third row, t squared plus 4 squared. Algebra concept, recall, you cannot distribute this exponent. That would be the same as seeing it like this. So if you did have to uh, solve this for some reason um, without numbers, like if you had to simplify, if you were doing a second derivative, whatever, if you had to see that, that's just an algebra recall for you guys. Okay, here's another one. So u, u prime, v, v prime. Now I'm going to set up the first two. I hope you work on this yourself. So this should be x squared plus 1, x cubed plus 1. So I hope you pause here and finish this problem. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this one. I don't think I have it written in, so I'm going to go ahead and write that real quick for you guys so you can figure out if you did it correct or not. And if you got that, then you got your answer correct. Now let's move on to trig. Recall some trig. So I put the exact same slide as I had before. So I'm just going to throw those back out there. Make sure you know these. Memorize, memorize, memorize. Know your trig. Here's my first one. So again, I'm going to do u, u prime, v, v prime. So this is x cubed. This is cosine x. So this is 3x squared. So this is co, so it's going to be negative and I'm going to find something that matches. It's sine. So y prime is going to be equal to my middle, my inside, minus my outside, 
all over the bottom squared. Ta-da! Now for this question, it's a little bit different. We're actually doing the second derivative. So I'm going to set up the first derivative, and then I'm going to test your knowledge. Can you, could you have done the second derivative? Okay, so my u, oh, yeah, okay, u prime, v, v prime, so this is 7x, so this is 7. This is cosine x, so this is negative sine x. So that means my y prime is equal to my inside minus my outside. That's uh, It's going to be minus a negative, so positive, all over this squared. Now, if I wanted to take y double prime, you guys would see, okay, so we have a new u on top, and we have a new v on bottom. We have a new top and a new bottom. This one's not so bad because it's a constant multiple. This is a sum and difference, but look what's happening right here. Isn't this a product rule within my quotient rule? Yes, it is. So this is my extension piece. I would like you guys to attempt this question, work on this, know it's a product within that quotient. But guess what else is happening down here? What's another way I can rewrite cosine squared x? It looks like this, cosine of x squared. Guess what? You technically haven't seen this because this is in video 2.8. I'm about to record that and post it for you. So go watch video 2.8. Understand that this is called the chain rule. So in this question, I've already done y prime for you. I am asking you to find y double prime. You have a product rule within, you have a chain rule within. So make sure you can do this. Rewind, clean up, whatever you have to do to understand this problem, get y double prime. If you can get y double prime, not only did you understand the quotient rule, but you would have also understood you would have also been able to show me you know the product rule and the chain rule. That's all three concepts. So that's why I want you to do this problem. I want you to show me y double prime because this is a good problem to see all three parts, all three topics, 2.6, 2.7, and 2.8. But that's it for this. So here's a wrap-up, closure, always, always, always of do your math first, do your derivative first, then plug in. Always do your plug-in last. Here's that um, notation for us, u prime v minus v prime u all over v squared. We know this as the product rule on top, but a difference, a subtraction, all over v squared. I tell you guys this is the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. And then that's it. That's all you have to know. So I will see you guys in video 2.8. Again, don't panic too much about these. I need you to know procedures more than you will work on solves in class. So don't stress too much. Know your procedures. Know your concepts.